So it's Rob. Yeah. So, so what's your initial reaction to that question? What do you think happens after this life? What do you think? Um, I think like, I think like our lives are kind of like, I think we're viewing our lives through like a pinhole. And like our lives are like a pinhole and then when we die we like zoom out of that pinhole. Ah. You know, that's kind of, that's kind of my view. Okay, I've never um, heard that before, <laughs> so that's unique. Oh really? I thought yeah. that was kind of. Uh, I don't know. Did you get that from somewhere else, or did you kind of come up with that on your own? I kind of. I mean, like I've, I've like, I've been around the block doing my fair share of psychedelics. I do. Okay. And that's kind of where I got that impression from. It's like you're only seeing a little bit. Yeah. And that's enough to occupy your attention, and like, you know, I think when you die, you you zoom out, but you're also like, you're not you. You're just like the you that you think you are is just like something that. The bigger you is just like focusing on for this. this so like the you, so 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 the self, the sense of self that we have now, is basically well, it's based on our time and our place, right? Mm -hmm. And so, if we can get outside of that, there's a much bigger picture. Is that what you're kind of saying, or? I think that yes, yes and no, kind of, uh, kind of. I think that I think that like like our sense of self is like a very kind of a narrower, uh, it's like a narrower construct than you think, and that, like, I think, um, after we die, it's like, it's like we, I don't know, I think, like, when, after we die, we'll, it'll be kind of like when you're really concerned about one task, that you're, like, really working really hard and yeah. finish it, and then you're like, oh, it's, it's, it's done, and then that, that thing that, like, occupied your entire conception was, like, now it's, like, now you're, you're kind of, taking a step back from that task or that mission now it's viewed in like a sequence of missions or in, in terms of like a you know a whole you like matrix of missions okay and you're like okay I, I was just that little, that little i can kind of relate to that because i had a i don't want to call it a near-death experience because it's not like i was on a hospital table or anything mm -hmm. but i almost got killed by i was on top of a ladder with a running chainsaw <laughs> trying to trying to cut down the top half of a tree, ah. and all of a sudden it, the wind shifted and it started. It came back straight for me, and Oof. and as it's coming, I was thinking. And at the time, I was in, I was running a youth center in the neighborhood, and I had all sorts of responsibilities. Like it just totally preoccupied my time completely, and that's all. You know, that was my focus, right? And then and then there was this sense of. When I'm when I'm about to be killed or thinking I'm about to be killed, there was a sense of release. Like, wow, that was short, and it's all over now. You know, right, right. and almost like a calm, calming effect. You know. Wow. So, I think I may have experienced that. But yeah, I mean, I think I think like I just think that like you know, your I think your brain is like some sometimes like you know like whenever we see something new that we that we never thought of, we're just like. Oh, I don't know. It's like we're kind of our perception of our brain's malleability is like an under assumption of what it is truly capable yeah. of perceiving. Because like I don't know, you had that experience, and yeah. then it kind of like it kind of like shifted your perspective. Yeah. You know, suddenly, and you didn't even know that was possible. Like, oh shit, I'm looking at all this from a different angle. Like yeah. in that brief second where you see that chainsaw yeah. coming for you. And I think you know, like uh, there's mind expanding experiences. You're talking about like psychedelic drugs or whatever. I mean, even things like traveling, you know, yeah. can open our minds to just seeing things in a whole different way, you know. Um, I, to, to be honest, I experienced that as, like, as a Christian, that, you know, the Bible talks about being born again, and it was like, whoa, like, life is, like, totally lived on a different plane or with a different purpose, I guess, is how I would describe it, but... So do you have any like um, like religious experiences? Like you grew up Catholic, you said. Yeah. And uh, it sounds like you've kind of, I don't know, rejected that or moved beyond that or something, think, or I you're like looking in other ways. Or? I rejected it for you know like my rebellious years, and yeah. now like the older I get, and I notice this is a pattern with a lot of my friends from my age, yeah. who are like atheists and they're like I don't care, dude, like in the early twenties. Yeah. And as they get older, I think like they I, they kind of like. It kind of like you're you circle back around yeah uh, in a weird like coming back home kind of thing uh -huh. and so that's kind of like but more on your terms right it's it's like <laughs> it's like you're so curious about what's out there you're like oh you're just like itching to get out and then you get out there and you realize like there's a lot that's lacking in in like 
uh, you know, in those places. And Would, then, were you an atheist at one time? Yeah, I it was. Doesn't like, sound like you are now. Like you have a spiritual sense. Yeah, I kind of like. Oh, I should say like you were a materialist, right? Like there's nothing beyond the, like the material world. That's. I was like, I was super like convinced of that for you know a couple of years. I'd say like you know a good maybe five to ten years of like. Yeah. Well, the only thing you have is like your visceral experience. So therefore, like your objective in life is to just like have the most visceral experiences. Yeah. And that's usually. I don't know if you had like a phase. Were you always a uh, Christian? Like, uh, I I grew up in um. So a Lutheran, which is kind of like Catholic, so like real formal um, understanding of religion, because Lutheran is kind of like Catholic, you know. Yeah. It's a liturgical church, so like there's there's formalized prayers, and it's not, and and so it wasn't until some Christians helped me to see that Christianity is more about a, like a relationship with God, not and not like a set of rituals or rules to follow, and so and so I. W so I, I guess I wouldn't consider myself a Christian until the point where Christ became my my Lord and my you know like the the, the reason that I'm alive like who I'm living for mm -hmm. um, where before I just kind of heard about him you know about yeah. Jesus and just all the other the I just thought know? like there's all these Bible characters and they're religious and they they're good people and I'm supposed to like follow their example and so I didn't I didn't really get it you know and so when I was like 17, that's when, you know, uh, people shared, you know, like, help me understand more. And so... Is that like a group of people in your church? No, and actually, um, so it's a group called Young Life, which is like a, like a minister, like in our neighborhood, I'm from Minnesota, and there was, the, the Christians that made up this group were from all sorts of different churches. So it wasn't any one church that was doing it. Which I really thought was cool yeah, because it was seems... like, hey, these Christians, they like each other and they're working together and they yeah. know each other and they have this own, you know, this little community, like, kind like of like on a mission. A lot of fun, honestly. Yeah, really it fun. was. It was. And it kind of drove, like, the pastors crazy and our parents crazy because we're not, like, totally buying into the church, you know? It's more like this outside group, but yet it's still Christian, you know? Uh -huh. So, <laughs> so. I guess it was the right thing at the right time for me because uh, it kind of helped me have. So, so like you grew up Catholic, like most people, they have a like a religious upbringing, mm -hmm. and then there comes a point where you have to like either take ownership of it yourself or find something of your own because you're forming your own identity. You yeah. Know? yeah. And so, so that was that was my experience. But you kind of went the opposite direction, just like totally rejected it. And then, um, what was it that made you? Was it the, the psychedelic experiences, or uh, not? What? Not quite. I wouldn't. I think like I uh, I associated religion with my parents, and I just kind of like had a lot of resentment towards my parents at the time. Yeah. Just because I was like a very like weird, curious kid, and yeah. they were like very strict and very like don't you know you need to color inside the lines all the time. Yeah. So I felt very like unwanted and unloved and I related that I related that to, to religion I was like this is just another you know uh, set of false lines drawn around telling me yeah. like, not to do this not to do that and I felt like religion was very limiting um, when I was younger was there also the, the feeling of like don't ask quite look don't question it you know yeah because if you question it you're like doubting it or whatever I, I was just like this is so stupid man in the sky you know like that kind of thing where you know you know when you uh when you're when you're of a certain age especially a teenager like you, you think you're really smart because you you have all these new ideas and you think that you're the first yeah. person who's oh, ever yeah. thought of them exactly. but then as you get older you're like oh everyone's had those ideas yeah. and you know and everyone's kind of gone through this phase that i went through and you see like how trivial all of your like profound you know and i was like oh there's no man in the sky that doesn't make any sense yeah and and then you know my my mom was kind of like that's not actually the, the point of it you know and i was like screw you you're just not you're just trying not to you know i'm so smart you're just afraid of how smart i am yeah that kind of thing and i like yeah so so i kind of yeah i had that association with uh, the religion is kind of like this very like uh I don't know, this very, like, narrow-minded, limited thing, which I think it can be to some people. Yeah. But I think, like, I think it's more of, like, a thing that you kind of shape to, to suit you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's your description 
of the unknown. Yeah. And I don't know, you kind of got to learn. One, one of the things that, that I think, like, I think Christian. I'll just say it with Christianity. I don't know, like, I, I haven't been a, another religion, right? So, mm-hmm. but in my experience of Christianity, there's, there, are, it's easy to ask hard questions that are not easy to answer. And when I say they're not easy to answer, that doesn't mean there's no answers. But what it means is I can't easily explain it in a soundbite, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so there's, you know, like people say, well, there's contradictions in Christianity and it's easy to point them out, right? Yeah. But there's, there's really what, what they are and what I've discovered as, as someone who is a Christian and I want the answers and I'm willing to do the, the homework and the research or the, just the digging or even just sit through the answers, um, it turns out that these, con- these apparent contradictions are actually paradoxes. So a paradox, I don't know if, you're know if you know what a paradox is, it's kind of like something that looks like a contradiction, but when you dig deep enough, you realize it's not. And so to try to answer skeptics, which I, I'm often in the place of doing when I get into these conversations, is if, if someone's a skeptic and they're not looking for the answer, and if, if they require a quick answer, they're not going to find it. If that makes sense. Yeah. But if they're willing to, you know, hey, read this whole chapter, you know, or read this book, or 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 you know, whatever, do something that takes a little bit of time and commitment, um, the answers are there and they'll make sense. But they're not there for anyone who's looking for a reason not to believe. If that makes sense. So, so as a young person, oftentimes people are looking. They don't want to go along with their parents' faith. Yeah. So they're looking for a reason not to believe. Yeah, so. you're right. You're right. They they want to be. They want. I think they you want just to do want their parents to be wrong yeah. about everything. Yeah, you know? and there's power in that. You I know? know. I know. And I'm my own person, and I'm smarter than my parents, and yeah, smarter than all these religious people or whatever. So, yeah. so I try to encourage people to, you know, like most people, if they have a negative opinion of the Bible. It's, it's usually based on the opinions of skeptics who have told them things, so it's really not even their opinion. Or it's based on maybe having heard some of the Bible when they were a little kid, and all they remember is certain parts, and it's easy to criticize, and they don't even realize what the rest of the Bible yeah, says. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Bible is so, really hard to understand. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of... I think it's, it's cool that people read it, because it's like... I think with the Bible and religious texts in general, mm-hmm. they're not written like books. You know, they're not no. like they're not like written like Harry Potter. It's not like a self. Oh yeah. Well, it's not like a novel, and it's not like a self-help book that, that tries to spell it out real easily. Yeah, either. yeah. It's it's written in like it's written in like a weird like almost like a a code, and it's like you. It's like I don't know. It's a weird type of like two-way communication. I feel because it's like you have to like read the thing. And then you have to like settle it. You almost have to like parse it yourself in mm-hmm. like religious text. And then like it, it requires a response. It does. Yeah. 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 I think it's cool that you're like getting youth involved. In this. I think that like I don't know. I think that that type of influence would help me a lot and a lot of people that I know. Yeah. You know, what you mean age. just these conversations or what? These conversations. And you oh, said okay. you, you run like a youth group. Well, I did. Yeah. I'm not anymore, but. Well, I mean, the but, uh, the fact that you did is, I think, really helpful. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, so, so, yeah, I was involved in Young Life in Minnesota, and then I started like a Young Life local chapter here. Mm-hmm. So that's what the youth center was all about. So, did you? Yeah. Are you still running it here, or did it? No, it uh, in the we, it 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 got to be a real big thing that required like a lot of funding. Oh. Um, so in the financial crisis of 2009 we lost all our funding and it closed down and that's when I decided to go back into teaching that's why I'm now a high school teacher so, yeah. so uh, do, you, do you believe in God then at this point or like I, it sounds like you believe you have a spiritual existence so you believe in the spiritual yeah. realm you know I don't believe um, in I believe in I guess it would be like kind of like I believe in, in a God mm-hmm. when I don't believe that there's no okay you know I, I wouldn't, I, I guess I, you know, I don't know if it's like the Christian God or, 
Yeah, I, I, I think there's a god. I just don't know what that is and whether yeah. I'll like ever, you know, truly figure it out. I, or maybe it's like, you know, then there's that corny thing. Like maybe it's like the quest is like me just thinking about that is like the uh, is the you know what I'm supposed. It's the to point. Be doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like kind of that weird paradox. Maybe a better question is, do you believe in the you know a creator god? Or I only want to say a. I want to say the because if there's other gods, if there's more than one god. One of them had to be the first one, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so, so there might be, uh, so, so I guess the way the Bible presents God is God is the Creator who has always existed because it says in the beginning God created, so God was already there. So, so the question who made God doesn't apply because God always existed. Um, but then, so then if there's other entities like. Well, the Bible does talk about angels and stuff like that. Well, then those are created beings. Even Satan would be a created being, you know? And we would be created beings. So I guess my question would be more like, do you believe in a creator? You know, like um, that. I believe that we were created, but I think, like, when you, when you, the connotations of, like, a creator are, like, like, I don't know whether the universe was created on accident or on purpose. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I don't know whether the, the creator... Um, even like is very concerned with us yeah and or like how would the creator define concern you know if, if there's this being that can create a universe by snapping by proverbially proverbially snapping its fingers yeah like is that creation important to it all yeah you know what I mean it's kind of like how we might like uh, step on an ant or demolish a, a plot of land natural plot to build like a house it's just like a afterthought or whatever or, or not or no thought yeah it's just like it's just like i'm just doing what like we're just doing what we're doing in like a kind of like a weird autonomous fashion yeah and you know it's like it's like you know could could, could god end the universe like as casually as he yeah. created it those are good and, questions and that's just that's <laughs> i think that's like what i'm trying to reconcile with but i also think that that's like kind of a um a reflection of like my internal state because I when I'm in a bad state I'm mm -hmm. like the, the the God that rolled above us has no is just destructed or is like has no concern for us at all and you know these because these bigger things are happening that I can control but when I'm in a good state I it changes and I'm like yeah. oh like all these good things are happening because like a God is looking out for me yeah and, you know like setting out these like little magic things for me and, just so you know, so I'm a Christian, right? As a Christian, and especially when I was like younger in my Christian faith, late, late, you know, like as I matured, I think it's become more steady. But as a Christian, uh, Christians go through the same thing, moods, you know, like things based on the weather or based on circumstances or our moods, right? And so there's times when Christians will ask the question, does God really exist, right? And, uh, but then there's times when they believe. And then atheists, same thing, only in reverse. They'll, they'll go through times when it's like, maybe God does exist. You know yeah, what I'm saying? that's true. And so kind of the definition of faith, uh, like a way to think about faith, because I, ultimately the Bible says faith is what pleases God. Faith, you know, like faith, trusting God and trusting Him no matter what, that's what God wants build in us right and so I have faith and faith is kind of I guess the maybe a definition of Christian faith is it's what carries us through the times when we doubt or the times even when it doesn't seem reasonable to believe so faith faith can go beyond reason but yet I, I do believe it's based on reason because like the Bible makes a lot of sense to me and there's, you know, like it, it explains the world. When I was saying, uh, like when I became born again, it's like, it's like the, the whole world made sense, whereas it didn't make sense before, you know? And so, you know, just to give you an example, um, the Bible says that, you know, like we, you know, like we, all of creation, including man, is made for God's glory in order to please God, right? So, before I might have thought, well, okay, God exists, but he's supposed to do what I want him to do, right? In other words, God exists for me. And so then there was a lot of things in my life that didn't make sense because 
well, if God exists for me, He's really letting me down. <laughs> yeah. See what I'm yeah, saying? I understand. And so, and so, um, and so, to have the the biblical point of view that, oh no, I'm here to serve God, not the other way around. He's not like a genie in a bottle mm -hmm. that I rub and get him to do what I want. I'm not God. He's God. I'm here to serve Him or to live for Him. Yeah. You know. So that things like that, you know, help help it to make a lot more sense but it does take faith because there are times when our moods go against us or the weather or circumstances or whatever you know yeah. and as a matter of fact um, so I'm I've been a Christian a long time there's a lot of things throughout life that God uses to teach me so that's why I say like I'm more more mature in my faith now well why because I've gone through a lot of hills and valleys with it and, and I've learned a lot you know, so so there, I I want to encourage you to to you know like maybe check out the Bible again and check out Christianity. Yeah. You know, just I'm definitely not adverse to that. I think like I think like I've I've kind of like uh, you know I, I had a I had a kick with like the psychoanalysts for a little while and like you know I, I read some Jung and that and Jung is kind of like he I don't know if you've ever read. I Jung think before. he's like Christian based, isn't he, or something like he, that. He like. He like tries to explain like the why of the Bible yeah. in, in, a, in like a weird like meta way, but I think like I don't know. I think I'm like kind of uh, in that. I'm like I've definitely arrived at that genre of like the books that the Bible is in. Yeah. So I'm I I I will get there. Yeah. I think, uh, when when the time is right. And one of the things I think that's important is to to realize the Bible is a whole lot of different genres and books, right? So it's like a library. So there's, I think, 66 books in the, in the Bible, and some of them are just straight history. Some are poetry. Some are um, uh, like uh, like the history of the Old Testament and the history of Jesus, you know, life and teachings. Within that, the Gospels, there's like parables that are things that actually didn't happen, but they're stories designed to tell spiritual truths. Like there's so many different parts to the Bible, and. One of the things I learned is, okay, I may not understand everything I read, but what am I doing with the parts I do understand, right? And as I started to live them out, read those, maybe concentrate on those, live them out, then the other parts started to make more sense, you know? To the point now where I'm pretty confident, um, I mean, so, so reading the Bible is it's like a habit I had to get into, like a daily habit, read a little bit of it every day, you know? So how, uh, like how, I guess like how much per day, like are you in a situation when you're like, I don't know what to do here, what is, and you think about the Bible, and uh -huh. then you like utilize those, that knowledge? Like. Uh, yeah, so, so there's, there's biblical principles, you know, that, that apply to our everyday life so so like different things that happen obviously I'm not going to look in the Bible and see exactly what to do but the principle applies right so like well I'll just give you an example um, I was trying to sell something on Facebook and I had to travel pretty far to go get it this guy wanted to buy it and I had to go pretty far to go get it and so I like took my whole evening I think that was uh, Tuesday night and yesterday, I said, okay, I got it, you know, it's ready. And he was like, oh, I changed my mind. Okay, so so I'm like, you know, wanting to tell him off, you know, yeah, by text yeah. or whatever. But the bi biblical principle is, man, look what God did for me. He, you know, like, I've, I've gone against him so many times in so many different ways, and yet he gave his own son to die for me. He forgave me of my sins and welcomed me into his family. How can I then go ahead and turn around and not forgive someone else who just did some stupid little thing to me, right? Uh -huh. And so I, I, but then at the same time, you know, another principle, I guess, is, you know, like, we don't really need to be walked over all over, you know? Um, it doesn't mean, you know, we're someone's doormat. So, um, it's given me the confidence to speak up for myself, you know. So I told him, um, hey, you know, I had to really go far out of my way to get this thing. 
how about for the next person you deal with, you try to be a little bit more considerate. Okay. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, okay, I'm not, I'm not letting them go without some kind of like little pushback here, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I can forgive him, you know? People make mistakes, you know? Yeah. I see that and, you, you kind of like took a step back. You yeah. Know, and you kind of saw like the bigger picture of it all. Yeah, and so it's like, it's like a prince, you know, the different principles that I've learned. And, and, and also I have to say like part of the Christian life is like relearning what you've already learned like over and over again because like, you didn't, part of life. you've <laughs> never really learned it really that well, you uh -huh. know? And so it's easy to forget these things. And so, um, so like when now I'm at the point when I read the Bible, most of it I, I know I ha I'm not learning anything. Well, I am learning things new all the time, but not a lot, you know. And, and and but I'm being reminded and reaffirmed of things that I I've already known and need, you know we just need to be reminded of. So yeah, interesting. Yeah. So I feel so, like I've kind of like that's yeah that's kind of like what. I think like over time, it's just how I've gotten older, I've kind of like, I don't know whether the Christian values were like inside me the whole time, but I've like more subscribed to those. Like I'm like you, I'm like, I'm a little less like, I mean at one point in my time, if that happened to me, I would like curse that guy out. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. I know where you live, like I'll come break your windows <laughs> if you don't buy this, like what the hell is right. your problem? And, and then, you know, but I think over time I've just like kind of had that had those experiences where like I was that guy yeah and I was like wait I should just you know start to see things reasonable. through other people's point of view yeah, yeah. you know I, I see that sometimes bad people like they don't even think they're doing anything bad like that guy you know he probably was just like eh, I don't feel like it like, didn't even think that he right. was like you know hassling me yeah and sometimes you have to remind people and that's kind of I think that that's like I don't know like oh, oh, I've gotten more like consider it as I've tried to learn more about different religions also. Yeah. The same way as and I will say like so I'm a, as a Christian I do value all religions um, to the extent that they all teach moral values hmm. to you know to some extent or another. Um, the reason I would give for that is because so here's the biblical reason is that the Bible teaches that everybody no matter what their religion, or if they're atheist or whatever, everyone has a God-given sense of uh, morality, like right and wrong, yeah. right? And, um, and it was given to us in the very beginning, Adam and Eve, they sin, they turn against God, and then God opens their eyes and they know good from evil, right? And so they and all their descendants, including us, we know right from wrong. The, the universal problem of all people is that we know right from wrong and we don't follow it. <laughs> We're always breaking it, right? Yeah. And we're always coming up with excuses why we think, well, this situation is different, or I'm an exception, but really we know we're wrong, you know? And so all religions are trying to solve that problem of, you know, we're, we're sinful people, how can we justify our existence? How can we redeem ourselves? And, um, and I would put most religions, all religions really, other than Christianity, and even Christianity, when people don't do their homework and they think this about Christianity, is that it's like you can somehow fix it yourself by being a good enough person. And I'm, in a way, I'm kind of glad that most religions teach people to be good people, because what would the world be like if we weren't, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad for that, but at the same time, you know, the, the, the gospel teaches that we can't be that good person that we want to, you know, like, there's no amount of good we can do that can outdo the bad we've done. The good we do, we ought to do anyway, you know? So how can, the balance scale doesn't work because the good we do, that's just part of what it means to be a human, the way God made us. We're supposed to do good. Use all of our God-given resources to serve others and help others, right? So, but the bad we do, we're going to be held accountable for it. And the hard part, very hard part, hard as nails part of the, the gospel or the Bible is that, that God will allow us to go our own way. If we want to do our own thing and go our own way, we will end up you know, away from God, which is defined as hell. It's, it's not, you know, it, it's, it's described very horribly, you know. But if Jesus gives away, and, and so, my, so am I going to go to heaven not because I'm a good person? It would be because 
Jesus died for my sins. And so Christianity is the only religion that teaches we can we can be the 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 good we can we can be right in in our maker's eyes despite our God-given sense of right and wrong and the fact that we've blown it. We can still be right in his eyes through faith in in Jesus, not in faith in ourselves and our own ability. So so if I think I can be good enough, I'm really just trusting in myself, you know. And most religions in some form or another teach that, you know. Yeah. I think that's a big thing that a lot of people need is to be, you know, reminded of because I think that especially like just the way that culture is and the way that rewards are laid out like to individuals. Yeah. It's it's kind of it almost gets against like what we're told from culture, at least this is my opinion, to like to, to think of other people. I think we kind of live in like a really selfish like time. Yeah. You know, and I think that that's why I kind of have warmed up to to religion more. Yeah. You know, kind of like you know, if even if people aren't perfect, as long as people are you know, somewhat considerate and, and yeah. are trying vaguely to make a better world instead of just trying to you know gather things for themselves and things like that. Yeah. You know, but you know it's like it's funny even so there's some people who are just like, well I don't care what anyone thinks, I'm gonna tell it like it is, right? And so we think, well, they're kind of a selfish, self-centered person. They're just living for themselves. But really, so if if we have a God-given sense of right and wrong, and we're trying to justify it, but if we do it outside of the Bible or out, you know, like if we are, if we think, well, I'm the one who determines what's right or wrong, right? So some people decide, well, telling the truth and honesty is more is that's the absolute value. It doesn't matter how you treat people as long as you're honest with them. And so in their eyes, they're just being a good person because they're letting people know how it is. See what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Or um, I've never talked with an atheist. I talked with a lot of atheists, and I've never met one that doesn't, in their own mind, believe they're a good person. And most of them are good people, you know, relatively speaking. Um, a lot of them are really involved in, um, you know, like the environmental movement or... Um, some kind of like social justice thing or something and so it's like I believe you know as a Christian they still have that God-given sense of right and wrong yeah they're just trying to be good without God if that makes sense you know mm-hmm. and they actually advertise like there's atheist organizations that actually advertise like they put that on billboards <laughs> atheism good without God you don't need religion you know yeah. or whatever so well, do you think that people need religion, or do you think that it's possible for someone to like live a good life and get to maybe like their version of heaven um, yeah. if they're not like strictly? Well, I mean, as a, like, so I could just say the Bible says that like um, there is a heaven, there is a hell. Heaven is where you know where you're living in a right relationship with God. And, and so the only, and it says, and this is, you know, why a lot of people reject Christianity is because it's so exclusive. It says, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but through me, right? So, um, so that's either, it's either true, or it's false and he was lying, or it's false and he was crazy, right? Yeah. And those are our choices, and Jesus was not, um, the reason Christianity is is uh, exclusive is because Christ was exclusive, and and the reason Christ was exclusive was because he claimed to be the Son of God. So if he really is who he said he is, then he had every reason to be exclusive. You know, it's like don't follow any other human leader. I'm the Son of God. Follow me, and that's why he was crucified. He was claiming to be the Son of. You know, he was able. He was claiming to forgive people sins, people who sinned against one another as if he was offended. Like, who does that, right? Or, you know, like, like if I walk down the street and I say, I forgive you, you know, and you didn't even do anything to me, you know? Like, who am I? Who are you, God? And Jesus would say, yeah, you know? I mean, he didn't just come out and say it, um, because he was trying to be kind of discreet, yeah. but <coughs> that's the claim, you know? And so we, we have... We have to confront that claim and decide what to do with it. You know, that's that's the ultimate. To me, that's the ultimate question: is 
for a person is who is Jesus Christ? You know, is he just a great, you know, moral teacher? If he was, then if he was telling lies about his identity, then he wasn't a moral teacher, you know? Yeah. Um, if he was, or if he was lying, like people, people die in his name and have been martyred for him, you know, and that, uh, like what kind of a person does that, you know? So, so I would say it's Don, right? Your name's Don? Rob. Rob, Rob, Rob. I knew it was like a three letter name. I would say, I, I would recommend <laughs> to check out the Bible. And when you do that, check out mainly focus on Christ and his life, like the, the, the Gospels in the middle or in the, at the beginning of the New Testament. Are you familiar with like the Old yeah, Testament and the New Testament? Testament. So, so that's a good place to start, you know. Um, and just get reacquainted with who Christ is and who he claimed to be because um, most people kind of have like selective memory about Jesus and his claims and what he said and they think oh he was such a nice person and he was so self-sacrificing for everybody and, but really he was his teaching was like as hard as nails you know it was, it was no compromise you know so Check it, check it out. No, I'll check it out. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's on my. I guess I'm just trying to see. Like, like one of the one of the um, disagreements I have with Christians is like I think that like good people go. I don't even know if heaven and hell is real, yeah. or in like the sense that it's. But I don't even think it like bad. Like to me, it doesn't even like matter that much. It's more like you can be living in heaven if you're a good person and you are like have faith in your actions. And then there's like weird paradoxes, like you know maybe someone is doing something that I consider bad in the name of you know in, in, a, in for their version of a higher purpose, and then you know but I, I like feel like yeah I don't know I feel like that's you know like like I have Muslim friends who are really good people yeah and, and I feel like they are as deserving as heaven as like I am yeah I try to be yeah so. Um... So then it comes down to like, well, how do we define good? So it's like, okay, whose who's, uh, standard are we going by? Yeah. And that's that's the whole question of like, you know, we have a God-given sense of morality. Um, is it going to be our our standard of the way we've interpreted it, or is it going to be you know an outside standard? And um, so the Bible actually does say if a person is good, and you know in that sense, they will inherit eternal life. The only problem is nobody has ever lived up to that standard. <laughs> so so when I think about like say a Muslim who's, you know, like a religious person and, and you know, pious I guess or whatever, uh, gives to the poor, like there's different tenets of Islam, um, you know, I think they're as good or better than me when it comes down to like basic human goodness, right? Um, and and I have to say, and that's, you know, like, but they don't live up to God's standard of, basically, Jesus said, you must be perfect, even as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Like, God is holy, right? So, the reason I know that, um, I mean, there's a lot of things I've done wrong that would disqualify me for being in Heaven, right? Yeah. Um, but even... Like, the Bible just starts right out and it says all they did was one act of disobedience. God said, don't eat from that tree, and they did it, right? So, okay, so they ate from a tree, you know? It's like, is that really a big deal? And the Bible actually says, yes, it is, because they're not treating God as God, right? They're, they're making up their own morality and doing their own thing. And, uh, and so what's the... You know what's the uh, consequence? Well, they were kicked out of this this paradise, this garden, and they no longer were going to live forever. They lived a long time, but they, you know, they didn't they didn't have eternal life anymore. They lost that. They they had to work by the sweat of you know, like they were cursed, really. And so that's that's the beginning of the effects of sin. And then their own children, one son kills another son. You know, it's like, wow, sin didn't take very long to grow from a simple act of disobedience to murder, you know, yeah. one generation. Um, well, so I think, it's, I think it's, 
you know, wouldn't it be <coughs> wouldn't it be great if if we heard the voice of God and, it, and His instructions were simple? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's like that's like a, at least like well, there's one philosophy that that's what animals feel because they don't ha- animals don't really have morality. You know, yeah. like, a, like a dog tearing apart a stick that it's playing with feels no different than tearing apart a rabbit that's alive. Right. Like yeah. it's just going, and it's almost like that that dog has you know. It's it's God. It's just telling what to do. It's like okay, I'll yeah. do it, and it and it, it is in its own version of this. Yeah, you know, and it's like as it's, people, it's we living have, out its purpose. You know, mm-hmm. and, and uh, as people, you know, we have we have. Uh, I think like what what God is to me as someone who's not strict, as strictly Christian as you is like the the competing influences of, of, of culture, of expectations, of your parents, of your friends. You know, and because that's like like God is is to me like a kind of like what is telling you what to do what is is what's telling you what to do but it's kind of like a schizophrenic well it sounds like a wor- competing worldviews or competing influences mm-hmm. so yeah and yeah I, and i think that that's you know a problem with a lot of people you know i think it'd be interesting for you to like have this conversation with like a devout muslim you know or, oh or i do even have, <laughs> but i'm sure like they're just like well you know god says this and it's like well allah says this and it's like you guys are equally you know it's pretty like, much i mean they're not uh, too different mm-hmm. yeah yeah, well, people, you know, um, people, the book, people, the book. Yeah, and but yeah, so your idea of God is—it's almost like God is a set of ideas or influences. Mm-hmm. Jesus said, "No, you can relate to your heavenly Father like God is is relatable. We were made in God's image, which means we're we're made to relate to God as you know, one human relates to another. Well, not—I mean, not like we are equal to God. It doesn't say that. An image is like very less than the real thing." Yeah. Like, what you see in a mirror is no, nowhere near what the thing actually is. In a lot of ways, it's not three-dimensional and stuff like that. So we're not God, but we're we can relate to God. And so, so even like the Lord's Prayer, Jesus said, "Pray, pray, pray, our Father who art in heaven." So a father is someone you relate to, you know, and someone who loves you and has compassion on you, and someone we can have a relationship with yeah. and that's what I've experienced you know through through faith in Christ he brought me into God's family and said now God is my father does that mean everything goes perfect no uh, a lot of times I got some hard lessons to learn and that's what fathers do they, they mm-hmm. teach their children you know so yeah I guess I'm still like yeah it's a, it's kind a of different waiting. concept of God that we're, yeah. we're talking about and also now. you know we have like we have like very different upbringings like like my friends, when we were 17, like you had a group of people who came from different churches and they kind of yeah. brought you to the fold. Like my friends were like the devil. You know, they were like, let's do drugs, let's drive fast, let's like get yeah. in trouble and do all this stuff. So I kind of had to overcome that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I'm still like, you know, but I do feel like to a certain extent, like I like envy people like you who <laughs> have like, you know, who have this conviction and it's worked out for them. Because, you know, I've, I think I've just had, like, a certain level of, um, like, adversity or maybe even, maybe just lack of faith yeah. know, that I've had to contend with. And that I'm still contending with. And, and, you know, I think, I, I think I'll get over it one day. I, I don't not see myself, like, being 40 and, like, religious. I, don't, I just, I, I see myself trending toward that. I don't know if it's my, my Filipino blood or something. Right. But I think that, like, you know, it's a... Uh, you know, I'll have to go through. I'll, I'll just keep searching until I. Yeah, well, I that's that's the point. Keep searching and yeah, um, try to be a good person. And, and as far as like the differences in our upbringing and stuff, you know, the Bible does say Jesus had a parable of, um, you know, like, well, in his parable, three three people are given money to go out, and they're servants of this this home this landowner. And so their job is to take what, and, and then he goes away, and then when he comes back, he, he wants to collect what, you know, what did you do with the money I gave you? And one's given ten talents, they were called. One's given five, one's given one, I think it is, or two. And, um, and so the ones with ten and five, now they have different amounts, right? So they're just held accountable for what they had. And, and so life isn't fair. Yeah. And so, so everyone has different situ. Everyone's dealt a different hand, right? Um, and then the one who only has one or two, he's like, 
he's like fearful of, of the guy and so he goes out and buries it and does nothing with it you know and he gets in trouble for it you know in horrible trouble um, and so that's it's, it's just like to show us that we're not we're not judged according to other people we're judged according to what has God given us and what have we done with it you know so which I think is a reasonable yeah, I mean, we're all, judgment. we're all different. I mean, I have the same feeling that you have towards, like, say, someone who grew up like a pastor's son, you know, because I know, I know some leaders in the church that have been consistent in their Christian walk, like, all their life, yeah. and they're really mature, strong people as a result of it, and it's because their parents were, like, past, you know, like, their father was a pastor or whatever, they, like, they had a head start, you know, yeah. and for me, I've made some really stupid mistakes, you know, because I became a Christian at the age I did, you know, and still made dumb mistakes, you know, and things I'm, I regret. And, and so, yeah, so I could almost say the same thing. Yeah, but, I guess there's, <laughs> yeah there's always so, another level. And then I've met, uh, you know, like we got a guy at our church who, um, he, um, he actually got hooked on, he was a, a homeless guy. He was sleeping under the, the, the freeway. Um, since he was in his mid-twenties, and when he started coming to church, he, he was in, he was over 60, and he got hooked on crack the day the Bears won the Super Bowl, which was like, what, 1986 or something like that, and so, and so he was doing that every day until he started, well, and then even when he was, it took him about three years or four, he became a Christian and gradually got free of, of his drug habit. And now he has an apartment and has some odd jobs and um, and yeah. And sometimes he gets a little frustrated. He's like, "Man, you guys got families, you know? And why can't I have a wife, you know?" And he's like in his late sixties. <laughs> oh man! So yeah. yep. so I mean, you know, and, and so it's just like, well, we're, it's almost like when a person becomes born again, when they become a Christian, it's like they wake up, and it might be when they're fifteen or 30 or 60 and whatever point you wake up that's when you start to live for God and that's when you start to you know live out what you've been given and it is what it is yeah I know right <laughs> I know yeah that's kind of that's also something that can't really be attached to you know the past or the, the things that yeah and you can't with. demand like uh, total fairness can't. They'll just, just go crazy. Yeah. You'll, you'll. I think the people who demand total fairness turn into very hateful. Oh yeah. Very hateful. Very people. angry. I think it's a very bad way to look at the world. Yeah. You know, just. You, I mean, and uh, it's kind of why I like the whole like the Buddhist thing of like gratitude. I mean, there is overlap between uh, Buddhism and Christianity. The whole thing. Yeah. Being well. Grateful. Yeah, and and trying to rid yourself of all those emotions and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, I'll give you my card. I'll turn this off. Yeah. This is um, fun. This is fun. It's always... Yeah.